let's say we have a graph. Here's my x-axis and y-axis. Let's say I got this graph. And if I pick these points here, and I say, can you find what the slope of these, po uh, just the line that's touching them, can you tell me what the slope of that line? Well, you make a triangle out of it, right? You go, well, that's the rise here, change in y over the change in x. That's what the slope is, right? M of this line that connects the two points is the rise, change in y, over the change in x. Now, what about if you pick two points closer than that? Let me, I'll do it under it, actually. The same graph, let's say this is the graph. And instead of a point here and a point there, I'll get them closer. There's the two points. And I said, can you find what the slope of the line that connects them? This is the line that connects them. Let me use a red color so you'll see it. See the red, red line? Can you see it a little bit there? Barely can see it, huh? The rise over the run. The change in Y over the change in X. One more time. Let me make the points closer. Let me pick this point and this point right next to it. When you connect these two points, what do you have if they're next to each other? Isn't that what you have? Right? And I don't know if you can see the rise over the run, little tiny one here, delta y over delta x. You look at that line, the red line is really the tangent. That's the tangent line. The tangent line is a line that touches the graph at one point. So if these two points are very close to each other, that's what you have. So now if you let the two points come close to each other, you have the tangent line. And you can find the slope of that line. So the slope will be what? The rise over the run. But you really want to say what? Uh, how do we say when the point's close to each other? You want delta x to be what? That distance to be what? Almost zero, right? You want to make sure the points are very close to each other. You want it as delta x approaches zero to say, you know what? If you let the two points approach each other, then that line connecting the two point becomes the tangent line. Well, what is delta y, by the way? When you look at this, what's delta y? Isn't that the change in the y value? So let me go back to this big picture. If I call this as the x value, then this is what? f of x, right? Our book uses, I don't like our book, it uses delta x, right? Yep. If I call this distance delta x between them, then what's this x value? If this is x, what's that one equal to? Yep, x plus delta x, very good. And what's the y value here? Or f of x plus delta x. I'm using f of x as the y value when here. I'm using f of x plus the delta x is the y value when x is that. So the change in y is really nothing more than f of x plus delta x minus f of x. That's really where the change of y. So then this equation becomes, you want to tell people, pick two points close to each other. So the slope here of the tangent line, m of the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line will be the limit as delta x approaches zero 
of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. That's how you find the slope of the tangent line. And what do you know? This is the heart and soul of the derivative, right there. This is your derivative. The derivative, the word derivative, is the slope of the tangent line. That's what the derivative is. So to find the derivative, to find it, we will be using this equation, the limit as delta x approaches zero of f of x plus delta x minus f of x, all of it divided by delta x. That's how we find the derivative. We label the we have a lot of labels for the derivative. If you have a function, if this is f of x, if this is f of x, then we call the derivative f prime of x. If you decide instead of f of x, you want to call this function y, we call the derivative dy dx. Different ways to call the derivative. We also call it y sub prime. We also call it the change, d of y with respect to x. Bless you. So we have a lot of labels for the derivative. A lot of them. It depends what the book want to use there. Yeah, yep. dy dx, y sub prime, or a lot of times you'll see it written as d dx of f of x. All of these means the same thing. Find the derivative, which means find the slope of the tangent line, which means you have to go through this equation. And if I give you a specific value, like when x equals to 2, what is the slope of the tangent line when x is 2? Because notice, if you look at that picture, if I want the slope of the tangent line here, that tangent line has a different slope than it was right here. It's different than if it's right here. So where you want the slope, it's different. It changes. If it's a straight line, straight line has one slope. It doesn't matter where you choose. But if it's not a straight line, if I have this graph, if I have this graph, notice the slope here. I'll do it red here. The derivative, which is the slope of the tangent line here, it's different than if I do it right here. The derivative here is the slope of this tangent line. The derivative here is the slope of this tangent line. So it depends where I look for it. The derivative here is the slope of this tangent line. So the derivative changes from point to point at this x value the derivative is positive. At this x value, the derivative is negative. The slope is negative. It's negative. It's positive. Increasing, decreasing. Quiet. So the derivative could be positive, could be negative, or it could be zero. Where can the derivative be zero? How about this point, right there? What is the derivative right there at the peak? And what's the derivative here? Isn't that the slope of the tangent line? This is my tangent line. What's the derivative of that line, horizontal line? Zero. What's the derivative here? Just something to think about. This is the application of it down the road. Isn't this the maximum value in this neighborhood? Isn't that the minimum value in this area? That's how we find the minimum maximum value. We take the derivative, set it equal to zero, and if you're gonna have a, a min or a max, it will be where the derivative is zero. 
So when somebody said to you, I want you to maximize the profit of my company. Well, if you know the equation for that company, you better take that derivative and set it equal to zero and make sure that point is a maximum, not a minimum. Because if you go to maximize your profit, you minimize it, you're out of a job. You know? You're probably in cement shoes somewhere in the river, the Connecticut River there. Worse than being yep. out of a job. So that's where the stuff comes in. You know, that's some of the applications down the road. We can also use the derivative to graph a function. Notice my function is increasing. And the derivative can tell me if the function is increasing, decreasing, increasing. That's the application of a chapter four. No rush yet. But when we get to that, you'll see. I'm not going to talk about the application of it because people say, why are we learning about the derivative? I'm not interested in yet till we know how to take the derivative. This is how we're going to take the derivative using this method. I call this the four-step process. Why do I call it the four-step process? Let's see. Let me take an example. Find the slope of the graph. Of the graph f of x equals 2x minus 3. And we want it at x equals to 2. Well, we know that's really a straight line, right? So if I want to cheat, why even take the derivative? This is y equals mx plus b. So the slope is 2. But if I didn't know that, I go, you know what? To find the slope, that's the derivative. Let me find it. That's f of x plus delta x. I'm going to make it the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x. And I'm going to find the answer for any value of x. That's how I do them. And if you want it at x equals to 2, you let x be 2. So here, what's f of x plus delta x? You go to this, I call it the four-step function because I need to find the answer to this one first. And to find that, we go to this function and replace x with what? x plus delta x. And there's the minus 3. So what do we have? 2x plus 2 delta x minus the 3. What's f of x plus delta x minus f of x? That's step number two. Let's find the answer to the top. That will be what? 2x plus 2 delta x minus the 3 minus, do we know what f of x is? I gave you that. It's right here. And notice this 2x cancels that 2x. That 3 cancels that 3. What's left there? 2 delta x. Step number 3, take the answer, which is the top, and divide it by delta x. If I take the answer of step number two, which is two delta x, and divided by delta x, what are you gonna have? Isn't the answer two? And step number four, take the limit as delta x approaches zero, f of x plus delta x, minus f of x divided by delta x. That's the limit as delta x approaches 0. What's the answer to this? That's the result of step number 3. 2. So try direct substitution. Go here 
replace delta x with 0. So what's your answer? 2. There is no delta x. It says replace delta x in this expression with 0. There's only got the 2 there. The 2 is always a 2. So what's the slope? It's 2. It doesn't matter where you look at it. It's always going to be a 2. Because that's a straight line. If it's not a straight line, I guarantee you that will change from point to point. So let me take another one. Notice this question was kind of tricky. They didn't say find the slope of the tangent line. That's what the derivative is. So I would say here the derivative is equal to 2. The derivative. But the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. How come they didn't say find the slope of the tangent line? If you graph 2x minus 3, if you graph that, what does the graph look like? 2x minus 3. Doesn't it have a y-intercept of negative 3? Has a slope of 2. Go 1 to the right and 2 up. That's what the graph looks like of that function. What's the tangent line of a straight line? Is the line. That's why they didn't ask for the slope of the tangent line. They asked for the slope of the line because they know that's a straight line and the tangent line is really the line. In the next question I'm going to give you, you can't ask for the slope of the line. There is no line. So I'll do another one. Find the slope of the tangent line. Now notice tangent line of f of x, let me make one up, x squared plus 1 at, I'll do it x equals negative 3, x equals 0, and x equals 1. I want the slope of the tangent line every one of these points. If I graph that function, just to show you, this is a parabola opening upward. It has a 1 here. It looks something like this. And when x is minus 3, that's somewhere here. That's where the minus 3 is. So my tangent line, just picture-wise, it looks like the slope of that is going to be a negative value because it's decreasing, doesn't it? That's the tangent line. I'm looking for the slope of that red line. At 0, it looks like the slope should be what? 0, because the tangent line is horizontal. And at 1, which is somewhere here, the slope should be what? Positive. Let's see if the math agrees with my picture here. Find the slope of the tangent line. The slope of the tangent line. That is the derivative. That's f prime of x. And to get that, it's the limit as delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x, all of it divided by delta x. The four-step process. Step number one, finding f of x plus delta x. That will be what? Go to this function, replace x with delta x.
Now, in case you're wondering, is this equal to x squared plus delta x squared? No. It's not this one squared plus that one squared. Adam, did I tell you guys I'm not having a test today? I think I told you last night, didn't I? What? About the calc class? Oh, no, you didn't tell us. Oh, I try to keep it a secret from everyone. <laughs> he was in my physics last night. I didn't tell him. Uh, so I feel so bad now. Yeah. Because I want you to study for it. I'm still going to take it tonight. So now this is not this one squared plus that one squared. We have to use the FOIL method. That would be what? X squared plus 2x delta x if you FOIL it plus delta x squared. And there's a plus 1. Step number 2. Find f of x plus delta x minus f of x. Bless you. Bless you again. This is the answer of step number one. Subtract from it the function itself. And again, you will notice x squared cancels the x squared. The 1 cancels the 1. So what's the result of step number 2? Two? 2x two delta x plus delta x squared. Step number 3. This is take the f of x plus delta x minus f of x and divided by delta x. Take the answer to step number two. Oh, that's times, not plus. Plus delta x squared and divided by delta x. That's the same as dividing each one by delta x, so you end up with what? 2x plus delta x. And what's the last step? Isn't it take the limit? As delta x approaches 0 of f of x plus delta x minus f of x and divide that by delta x. So that's the limit as delta x approaches 0 of the result of step number 3. Now try direct substitution. What's your answer? 2x, right? Because delta x is going to 0 has nothing to do with x. That is your derivative. So you want to find the derivative at minus 3? So what is f prime at minus 3? 2 times a negative 3, which is what? Negative 6. I say it's going to be a negative value. I'm right. What is the derivative at 0? 2 times 0, which is what? 0. I'm right again. The little dash over the f means what now? Huh? The little dash over the f means... Derivative. Derivative. Yep. Except saying f prime, though. That's, exactly. that's, like, that's how we write the derivative, f prime. Okay. Yep. And what's f prime or the derivative at 1? My picture says should be positive. Well, it's 2 times 1, which is what? 2. So a negative, 0 positive. So the derivative is actually the slope of the tangent line. You can find the slope of that line. If I'm really having fun with this question, I said to you, I don't, I want to know the equation of the line. I'm interested in knowing what is the name of that line, by the way, not just the slope. Can you tell me what the name of that line? 
Is there a way to figure out what that is? Let's look at that one. Can we figure out what the name of this line? And if yes, how? This is x equals what? Negative 3 here? By the way, what's the y value here? What is it? Plug it in. What's minus 3 squared? 9 plus 1? 10. So this point, if you look at it, that's negative 3 comma what? 10. How is that going to help me find the equation of the line? The point slope. That's right. Chapter 1. We can use y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. I know the point. The point is what? Negative 3 comma 10. This is your x sub 1. This is your y sub 1. I also know what the slope at that point. I calculate that from the derivative, which is what? Negative 6, right? Plug it in. y minus 10 equals negative 6. x minus a minus, that makes it a plus 3. y minus 10 equals... negative 6x minus the 18 bring the minus 10 to this side becomes a plus 10 so if you want to find the name of that line when x equals minus 3 right there the equation for that tangent line that's the equation for it it has a slope of negative 6 and if you continue graphing it will intersect the y-axis at negative 8 Notice these are a lot of steps here. And those are easy examples I'm giving you. Imagine if this was x to the fourth or x to the fifth. And we will be dealing with x to the seventh, x to the fiftieth. So the math could get ugly. Or you could have a square root. Or a fraction. Given f of x, I'll make it straightforward, is the square root of x. Can you tell me what the derivative of that? And maybe while I'm at it, can you tell me? Let's discuss... I'm interested, I'm going to, um, one more S, discuss the behavior, let's look at it, of f prime of x at 0 comma 0. Can you tell me what's going on there? What's the derivative there? I don't even have to graph, well, I do have to graph it to show you. But I don't even have to take the derivative to answer that question. If you graph that function, anyone knows what the square root looks like? If this is my x and y axes, can't take the square root of a negative number. So if you graph the square root, this is what the square root graph looks like. That's what the square root looks like. It says, can you discuss the behavior of the derivative at 0, 0? Well, what's the, what's the derivative? Derivative at that point is what? The slope of the tangent line. Well, what is the tangent line at 0 looks like? What's the tangent line at 0? Isn't that this line up and down? Isn't that the tangent line? 
and the derivative is the slope of that line. What is the slope of that line there? Undefined. Undefined. So I can tell you without even doing the math that the derivative at zero, because it's the slope of the tangent line, does not exist. Does not exist. You have a vertical line. I'm going to go through the math and prove that, that the derivative at zero does not exist. But you can look from the picture, the tangent line will be a vertical line going up and down. That line has no slope. So let's find the derivative. Again, the derivative, straightforward, the definition is the limit. By the way, a lot of math book, calculus book, instead of delta x, they use h. Instead of writing two letters, delta and x, they like h better than delta x. It really it makes it easier. Our book's stubborn. They decided to use delta x. But you can write it if you want. I've seen books go like this. F, whoop, f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h as h approaches 0. Instead of delta x, they use h. Less writing x and delta x gets a little bit confusing. So a lot of the math book will use that too. So you can use any one you want to. It doesn't change your answer. Because you're going to let h approach 0, and that will come out of your answer, will not be part of your solution. So the four steps. Step number one, find f of x plus h. And that's straightforward. It's the square root of x plus h. Can we simplify that? Can we break this one down? Can I write that, the square root of x plus the square root of h? What do you think? Let me answer that quickly. The square root of 4 plus 9. What's 4 plus 9? 13. Can I rewrite that, the square root of 4 plus the square root of 9? What's the square root of 4? 2. What's the square root of 9? 3. Are they equal to each other? No way. So you can't break a square root when it's addition subtractions. Only if it's multiplication division. If that was multiplications, that's fine. Because 4 times 9 is what? 36. What is the square root of 36? 6. If you break it down, this is what? 2 and that's what? 3. What's 2 times 3? 6. So you can do it if it's multiplication, but not addition or subtractions. So if you're thinking about writing this as the square root of x plus the square root of h, think again. Does not. Does not work. So I can't touch it. That's it. I'm done with it. Step number two, take f of x plus h, subtract from it f of x. And that is the square root of x plus h minus the square root of x. And I can't really simplify that either. Step number three. Take f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h, or delta x. Since I'm using h, I'll stick with it in this example. Can't simplify anything. Whatever I'm doing, I'm just getting stuck. Boom, done. Looks good so far. Well, you know when something goes smooth, you know it's something is going to click somewhere. You're going to have a little problem. And that's where the problem comes in. Step number four. Take the limit as h approaches zero. This has been moving really nicely, straight forward. So something is not right. And if you try direct substitution, what do you have now? Division by zero. You get zero over zero. That's where the problem comes in. So how do you fix it? We did that early tonight. Conjugate, very good. This becomes the limit 
as h approaches 0 let me multiply by x plus h plus the square root of x which equals the limit as h approaches 0. Notice I'm writing next to it because I need all the space I can get. Leave the bottom alone as I said early. 9 out of 10 times will work out just beautifully. Now let's look at the top. Let's foil that one. When you multiply square root of x plus h times the square root of x plus h, the result is what? x plus h. The middle pieces will cancel each other out. Don't waste your time with them. And what about this one times that? Minus x. And notice the x is on the top will cancel each other out. This cancels that x. So you end up with the limit as h approaches 0. I'll go an extra step here. What's left on the top h? The bottom h times And can these edges cancel each other out? So that's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of 1 over the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Now try direct substitution. Replace h with 0. So if you use delta x instead of h, you'll have delta x here. That's it. If you now let h be 0, what do you have? 1 over 2 times the square root of x. And that's your derivative. f prime of x is 1 over 2 times the square root of x. This will give you the slope of the tangent line. But since that changes from point to point, I can't give you a number. You've got to tell me where. So if you want it at 0, what's the derivative at 0? Isn't that 1 over 0? Which is what? Does not exist. I knew that earlier I said that. How does, how does that end up being 2 times the square root of x? Because that will be the square root of x plus the square root of x, Jason. h is gone. h is 0 oh, now. sorry. Yep. You want to find the slope at 1. Notice when x is 1, if this is the 1, the tangent line will look like this. You want the slope of that line? You go, what is f prime at 1? 1 over 2 times the square root of 1, which is what? A half. So I can find the slope of the tangent line at any point. You just tell me what point, and I'll tell you the answer. Well, if you know the square root, there is no graph to the left of 0, so you can't do for anything negative here because the functions are only defined from 0 on. As I said, the problem with this the problem with this is sometimes the math gets really ugly. Or the derivative does not exist like a case like this. There's, by the way, a couple of places where when you do the derivative, it doesn't exist. This is one of them. I'll give you a few places where the derivative does not exist. I'll, I'll draw the picture for you. We, we just did one of them here. The square root, we know the derivative does not exist as 0. Because it goes like this. So we know the derivative at 0 does not exist. Another case is the absolute value, for example. 
Let's say I have the graph, the absolute value of x minus 1. x minus 1. Absolute value always has a graph of what? It's a V-shape. That's where the 1 is. And it will look like this. You can pick points and see what the graph will look like. Absolute value is always a V-shape. The derivative does not exist in this case right at the V there. So in this example, the derivative at 1 does not exist. Anytime you have a V, there is no derivative. Why? The derivative is the limit, the slope. Well, think about this. At this point from the left side of the slope is what? Negative. From the right side of the slope is what? Positive. The slope has to be the same from both sides to have a slope. So it can't be negative on one side, positive on the other side. So that's why in calculus we always try to avoid cases like these, because if you have a V, you have undefined, or derivative does not exist. A third possible one, the derivative does not exist, that you might encounter that, is when you have a function like this one x to the one-third. That's the cube root of x. Well, we know with the square root, if it was, it looks like this, because you can't take the square root of a negative numbers. But with the cube root, you can take the cube root of a negative number. So you have this part here, you also have a part that looks like this. Because you can take the cube root of a negative, x to the one-third, it means the cube root of x. So when x is 0, the y value is 0. When x is 1, what's the cube root of 1? 1. When x is minus 1, what's the cube root of minus 1? Negative 1. When it's 8, what's the cube root of 8? 2. What's the cube root of minus 8? Negative 2. So you have that graph. And guess what the derivative at this point is? It's the tangent line. And what is the tangent line there? It's a vertical line. So for this, the derivative is 0, does not exist too. So the sharp rise and sharp fall, there is no derivative there. Or sharp turn, if you want to call this. It comes in, quickly switches direction. So there's a few places the derivative does not exist. Anytime you see a V in your design, your graph there, you know at that point you don't have a derivative. Or, one more, I just thought of it, the unit step function. Remember the unit step function? I think we mentioned that once. It looks like this. Let's take, for example, the derivative, there is the 2. The derivative at 2, at 1, at 0 does not exist. Why? Because that's the slope of the tangent line. From the left side, the slope of this line is what? 0. And from that side is 0, but there's a hole in it too. Discontinuity. So the slope is the same from both sides, but you got the hole in it. You can't have a derivative, there's a hole there. So there's a case where the derivative does not exist few possible cases. Okay. So imagine if I decided to be mean to you and I said to you, I'm not going to do this problem, but imagine if I came and I said, you know what? Uh, I got things to do, so why don't you guys do this problem while I go make a phone call. And I go, x to the 24 plus 7x to the 15 minus 8x. Can you tell me what the derivative is? Find, let's even make it more fun here. Find f prime of x. 
Well, you go, well, that's not bad. They just give me about a week and I might have the answer for you. I said, you got 22 seconds to do it. That's a short phone call. Yep, I'm going to say, nope, I'm not coming. <laughs> the answer is actually to this is 72 x to the 23rd plus 105 x to the 14 minus the 8. And I'm not lying. That is the correct answer. We do have shortcut for these problems. We can get the answer a lot quicker than using that four-step process. Normally, actually, when I'm lecturing, I don't cover the shortcut till I torture people in section one. I make them go home and work on section one. When they show up next day, I show them the shortcut and they're all mad at me. I normally wear a hard hat for that class because they want to toss thing at me, but you try it this time, I'll sue you. I got my lawyer watching you. Yes. It's easy. Yep. 24 into 3, 15 into 7. So we're going to look at the shortcuts. <laughs> Let me stop this video.